before winning on the second night of a back-to-back by a casual 41. Two straight wins over Golden State prove the OKC Thunder are built to contend. SGA has a lot more help this year, having formed a beastly one-two punch with Chet, and the Thunder's go-to trio, including J-Dub Jalen Williams, plus how the young core has the vibes at 100% at all times, deserves its credit. But former Sixer second-round pick Isaiah Joe threw 14 games, shooting 50% on just under six triples per night, also also deserves some spotlight. After breaking down how Chet combined with Shea for 76 in the Bay, we'll look at how this Oklahoma squad's historically beastly, but just 9.6% of you watching are subscribed, so if you're a Hoop fan, make sure you hit subscribe. While second scorer Jalen J. Dub Williams, who was drafted 12th last year, and second playmaker Josh Giddy, who was drafted 6th overall in 2021, took pressure off SGA in terms of scoring on the wing. In years past, Shea Gilgis Alexander was lacking someone to connect in the pick and roll with. Also, aside from Gildress Alexander, Coach Mark Danio lacked another vocal leader between the lines. After missing a year due to a foot injury suffered while trying to guard LeBron in a crossover pro-am game, Chet Holmgren's lived up to expectations so far by providing OKC with everything and more of what they were lacking before this year, reliable secondary scoring, and a two-man game companion for Shea. Shooting an NBA rookie best 46% from three-point range, while he's posting two points per game less than Wembenyama, Chet's giving Victor a run for his money in the RRY race, given he's been considerably more efficient than Wemby. With Chet completing the puzzle next to Shea, the OKC franchise has its best duo since the Kevin Durant-Russell Westbrook era. A game before OKC dominated Portland to become the first Western Conference team to reach 10 wins, Chet's career night in the Bay saw him go to work for 36 on 72% true shooting, which included making up for a wide open miss layup the possession before by perfectly cutting around an SGA flare off the inbound and pivoting for the game time fall away at the buzzer. This man Holmgren is the real deal, as he's resembling a hybrid of Dirk Nowitzki with his role in pop man scoring and Kevin Durant with his crafty guard skill yet freaky reach advantage. Chet's just ahead of Nikola Jokic, Bam Adebayo, and Jonas Valanciunas in points per game as the role man score, and insanely, Chet would be the very first player to be top 10 in role man points per game as a rookie in the nine years of NBA.com tracking data. What makes him elusive is that he's capable of just as easily popping out the drain catch and shoots, but in terms of as the roller and generally as a finisher, what legitimately allows Chet to finish at will is the combination of catch grasping soft hands, sharp as knife reactivity, and polished finesse. Defensively, he'd throw it back to when he blocked Steph at Curry's camp as a 16-year-old kid by stuffing Chef just like old times, while on the other end, Chet showed you his diverse scoring to occupy the dunker spot for a couple buckets off two typically elite SGA dimes before taking it coast-to-coast -coast off the bounce, hop-stepping into the lane around Thompson, and finishing while drawing contact for the and one. For a 7-1 with a 7-6 wingspan menace to have that type of handle, balance, and scoring awareness in space is just unfair. Realistically, what's unfair is the fact that Chet wasn't even OKC's leading scorer for that Golden State win, as that was the former LA Clipper, product of Kentucky and Toronto, Ontario, Canada native Shavante Aishan Gilgis Alexander. Shea's making a career best 53.5% of his field goals, posting 29 plus points per night for a consecutive season snatching a career best by far two and a half steals per game, while also posting a career high 6.2 rebounds per game. SGA's last showing in Rip City where he posted 28, put him in the NBA lead for the most games of scoring at least that amount so far this year. Showing us he's a top 5-10 to 10 player in the game, Shea's in the midst of turning Oklahoma City back into Loud City, leading his troops in points, dimes, steals, and minutes. If the season ended today, the 23-24 Thunder would be the only squad in history to have shot 50 plus percent from the field and 40 plus percent from three-point range simultaneously. Signifying the well-roundedness of this Thunder system, they're one of two squads only next to a number one seed in the Boston Celtics to be top seven in all of offensive rating, defensive rating, and net rating. Also displaying that balance, prior to injuring his hip, Jalen J. Dub Williams was taking a step forward as a sophomore, boosting his point per game average by three. Additionally, rookie 10th overall pick Kaysen Wallace looks NBA ready and is resembling a capable 3 and D weapon that'll make this team tougher to deal with. 
Josh Giddy and Lou Dort are above average fourth and fifth weapons, but most effectively for Oklahoma, it's been the man ranked number six on their team in scoring, Isaiah Joe. That stood out as the X Factor. Isaiah's only trailing Shea for the highest plus minus on the roster through 14 games of the year, having been nothing less than a godsend for this team. Tied with Alex Caruso of the Chicago Bulls for the 6th highest 3 point percentage in the NBA, Joe's made the most threes out of anyone in the top 10 in deep range efficiency. Isaiah was coincidentally a high school teammate of OKC's second round pick last year in Jalen J. Will Williams. Now 24 year old Joe was a senior when now 21 year old J. Will was a freshman at Northside High School in Fort Smith, Arkansas. As the saying goes, it is a small world. For Isaiah, after being given up on by the 76ers last summer, the Thunder signed him to a three-year contract for the minimum. He was quietly a 40-plus percent three-point shooter in 22-23, suiting up in 73 games, but has taken his game to a whole new level in his fourth year as a pro. Joe won't be an unrestricted free agent until 2025, but is looking at a massive extension in the 2024 summer if his production even somewhat hovers around the current output. The foundation of every great team features a great GM, and OKC fans can thank Sam Presti for keeping the organization which moved from Seattle in 2008 in such an outstanding position in the post-Durant-Westbrook era. Not only is OKC top three in the West, not only are they the second youngest team in the league, but Presti's netted them 27 picks between now and 2030, including Houston's top four protected pick in 2024. Brava. For today's question, is OKC ready to contend? Best answer down below in the comment section earns next video's commenter shout out, and the top five commenters by the end of the year earn free NBA merch of their choosing, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Naomi, who says Nas is definitely underrated for his effectiveness and contributions and rotations coming off the bench. Been pretty evident, especially on these road games when offense has been shaky. Definitely earned his playing time this season and making it count when he's on the floor. Great take right there. D-Flow signing off.